Hey, this is Melissa from Girl Gone Fishing, and I am sitting at 5 a.m. in my kayak in the middle of a rainstorm trying to catch some big bass. So I'm here with my buddy Adrian. We're both in the KBF State Challenge for August, and we thought maybe some pre-dawn fishing would be a good idea, but rain. So we're both trying to figure out how do you catch fish in the dark and in the rain. Top water seems kind of like redundant since the rain's already splashing the heck. It's 16 mile per hour winds. So today's challenge, or this morning anyway, is how do you catch fish in the dark in the rain? So here we go, hopefully some big bass. All right, Adrian, what are you putting on next? I'm looking for a uh, Colorado leaf sturgeon. That's what I'm looking for right now. I just gotta find it. It's hard to see this thing already. All right, he's changing up his spinnerbait to a big Colorado leaf, Colorado blade, so you get that thumping vibration when it's really dark and the rain's really loud. Adrian got a fish. My camera won't focus because there's rain on it. All right, what you're looking at right now is Adrian measuring a fish through my rain-soaked, blurry camera lens. It's gonna work. He's what? It's gonna work barely. Alright, after further reflection, Adrian cannot get him to hit the 12 inch mark, so he was his practice fish of the morning. Earliest we've caught a fish out here though, so it's encouraging that they're at least biting. And since the sun is supposedly up right now, um, I'm going to switch over to using my Free XD crankbait, which is the lure that usually works on this lake. Only instead of the bluegill I use during daylight hours, I'm going to use a chartreuse blackback. Hopefully if I can crank slow enough and get it to make enough commotion down on the bottom, I can attract some fish attention and get myself a good bass. All right, wanted to show you my hat cam. So it's got the straps, the camera, fits up under my hood really nicely because it's still raining. So I was just sitting here not catching fish and thinking, you know what's funny is that we don't even have to be here today. It's not a one day tournament. We could be home, warm, dry, enjoying some coffee, something. Um, but no, I'm out here chasing this crazy bass around. Uh, I don't know, something's wrong with me. I'm trying to remember that in the lower light they can't see as well, so I probably have to reel a little bit slower, but it's really hard for me to slow down. Holy crap, do I have fish? Oh no, I have a stick. That one got my heart pumping. My usual crankbait rod is sitting at home next to the front door where I put it after I restrung it last night, ready to go. But this morning at 3 a.m. when I left to come here, I just moved the rod aside and left and didn't think about it until like 15 minutes into the drive. And by then I didn't want to turn around to come back. So I am throwing my little crankbaits on a spinning reel today. All right, you guys need to see this. You guys need to see how much water is standing in my kayak after that rain. I mean, it's not even done raining, but I just felt like, man, my feet are really wet. And I looked down, look, it's crazy. My pliers are totally underwater. I'm gonna have to get my emergency sponge and start bailing. So here is my emergency kayak water removal sponge. It's pretty much just a big sponge, uh, washable, and you soak up the water. And then wring it out. So it turns out that was not a sponge job, that was a bilge pump job. Yep, this is my emergency bilge pump that I keep in the dry hatch. Never thought I'd actually use it, but I had so much water in my kayak. It must have been some from the storm last night that I didn't notice, plus the rain that we just had. So I had to bilge pump it out and thought I was ready to get back to fishing. But then when I went to turn the camera on, I realized that all my dry bags that I keep the camera equipment in had soaked up a bunch of water. So all my really expensive battery chargers are fried. Um, the one other camera is dripping water and uh, I don't think the battery charger will come back, but I think the GoPro will be okay after it dries out. But for now, I'm using my phone and the hat cam and we'll see if we can get something together with a big bass. All right. 
right, I've got my GoPro app connected to my camera so I can actually see what I'm shooting with the head cam. Woohoo! So now's a perfect time to tell you guys about the Rogue Fishing Tether and how cool Rogue Fishing has been. So I bought about a month and a half ago one of these Rogue Fishing Tethers to keep your phone safe on the kayak. So it's got kind of this soft rubber webbing. There's four corners. They loop over your phone. Then it's connected by a carabiner. And I have mine on a retractable tether because I have to have my phone up here uh, when I'm controlling my camera. You can see that I can see what's going on with the camera. But then I have to also be able to pull the phone over here to take pictures. So most people clip their just the bungee cord part to their life jacket. Um, I have mine slightly different, but still it's a great product. But last week when I was out, my one of my corners broke and I messaged Rogue Fishing and they said, even though your warranty has been expired for a couple days, so it must've been like a 30 day warranty, but they went ahead and sent me a new one. Uh, so it took less than a week from breaking it to new phone tether. So my phone's safe again. And thank you Rogue Fishing for being an awesome company that stands behind your products. And cool looking beaver den right there. So this bank is a little different. Oh, I had one. I had one and I pulled it right away from it. Okay, well, Adrian just called me from the other end of the lake to let me know that he just landed at 18 and a quarter fish. So good job, Adrian. He was calling because I told him to let me know if he got a good one and I'd come over and try to video it for him. But I don't have my ringer turned on, so I missed the call. But when I called him back, he let me know, but the fish had already been released. So good job, Adrian. That's huge. It's a great way to start off this tournament. Um, unfortunately, he got it on a spinnerbait and I don't carry spinnerbaits with me. So I'm gonna try to make them love this 3XD or possibly a chatterbait though maybe I should switch from the 3XD because I've been throwing this since 4 30 this morning and haven't got a keeper fish on it yet maybe that should tell me something <laughs> like move on change be less stubborn adapt so I got to figure out how to imitate a spinner bait if that's going to be the successful bait of the day seeing a lot of little shad action like flipping right at shore so I'm trying to get this popper up there it'll let me stay in that strike zone close to shore like longer than my crankbait is and hopefully that'll help trigger some fish but first I have to get it under all this stuff and right up there next to the shore closer. Nice. All right, so I'm going to let it sit, but be ready for a hit. That's what I've learned. You cannot let your attention wander when you're doing top water because they could be looking at it right now. Let it sit, let it sit, let it sit, let it sit, and then pop, and then let it sit. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. As soon as you do that first pop, bam, fish. This was one of my favorite lures when I learned to fish out in California. And those reservoirs and lakes are so clear and so deep. And yet I caught so many fish on this little topwater popper frog. This is the live target popper frog. And what makes it cool is the feather tail for one, and then this cupped popper front. 
So it makes a very distinctive popping sound. So I just had a thought. So every time you guest star in a Girl Gone Fishing video, do you catch an 18 inch fish? I think so. I think that's just my deal. Usually when you're near me, I catch a fish. <laughs> like seriously. So from now on, I'm just going to need to like, you know, make videos with you. Just be close to me and then I'll catch them. Because <laughs> we've fished together a bunch when I haven't filmed and we don't catch fish. I mean, we have our days. We do. All right, so since I missed your fish, tell me about it. Is that the one you were using? Yeah. What is it? It's an Indiana leaf, War Eagle Indiana leaf. Indiana leaf? It's got the smaller profile, but then it also gives more thumb because of the same water. Right. So it's kind of my deal for here and the other place we go. Nice. I don't have any spinner baits with me. Well, I'm usually not one to call it quits early, but when I signed up for the August KBF Monthly, I promised myself that I wouldn't get obsessed and beat my body up like I did uh, June and July. Like I just went so hard those two months and it paid off, I loved my results. But in debating on whether or not to do August, I promised myself that, you know, I would quit if I wanted to quit. So I am going to call it quits and go home. I'm leaving Adrian here, still fishing, making me feel bad like a quitter. But I'm going to come out and try it again tomorrow and hopefully I'll get some better fish.